Hello and welcome to the Ultra in Conversation With. And today I'm joined by the fragrant Sue Smith from the United States. She's up early, bright as a button, to join me for a conversation about a variety of topics. Hello, Sue. Hi, good morning. Good morning to you. Everything tickety-boo there? Everything here is fabulous. Look, the sun is getting ready to come up and it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day today. Superb. Now, for those who might not know who Sue is, I'm going to invite her to, to give a little explanation as to what she does in the world of YouTube. So if you could do that for me, please, Sue. Absolutely. I run a YouTube channel, Sue Smith. I discuss all the royals, um, Charles, Camilla, Andrew, Fergie, you know, Eugenie, everybody. Now, I'm not just a Harry and Meghan channel. I talk about everybody. And um, I recently uh, started a new format because some people want just the real working royals and mm -hmm. some people just want Harry and Meghan. So now I've got three videos, <clears throat> excuse me, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday so that you can just go to whatever it is that interests you in my, um, you know, daily output. OK, so for those of you who don't know Sue already, I'll provide the link in the video description so you can go and mm -hmm. take a look at her output also. Now, Sue, first question that occurs to me as an Englishman <laughs> is this. Why would an American be so interested in the British royal family? I've always been interested in the royals. Um, it was always a dream of mine to go to London, which I just did th this last October. And I got to go to Hampton Court Palace and Windsor Castle and Buckingham Palace and, and Westminster Abbey. It's living history. And of course, it's the United States history. We know, you know, how we used to be with you guys. Mm -hmm. And um, always had the greatest admiration for Queen Elizabeth um, and have always been a royal watcher, but never, um, you know, had a channel or anything. I was just one of those people that just admired the royal family. And then, of course, I just kind of fell into the YouTube thing uh, after my previous career. Okay. Uh, who's your favorite royal? This is going to be so cliche. It's Catherine. Okay. And <laughs> why, why, why is that? She's the epitome of class. Uh, I've never, in all the years I've been watching her, I've never heard her say a bad word about anybody. She's never been anything but, um, you know, um, upbeat, honest, forthright. I love the fact that when the royals go around, they bring attention to um, very important things and they help them fundraise. They don't do it for themselves. They don't make money by going around to these uh, you know, places, but they help these places elevate themselves so that they can make the funds needed for their charities. I just think that's a very selfless thing to do. I see. It's obviously interesting to hear an American perspective on the British royal family because, of course, mm -hmm. We've had the uh, a monarchy for hundreds upon hundreds of years, whereas mm. yours is a comparatively young country. Mm. And the monarchy is the very embodiment of what you didn't want in your country. <laughs> and you, you, you traitorous colonists fought a war with us and unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately won. So what is it particularly about, given that a monarchy doesn't really sit with what the United States is about? Mm -hmm. Yet so many Americans do have a fascination with it. Is it because it's just that, something you've not got and never had, or is it something else? It, well, I mean, it's a matter of our history, like you said. It, it still is my history. Um, it may be 20 generations back, but it's mm -hmm. still my history. So, of course, I show great interest in it. Um, but I, for me, it's living history. And so I, which is why when I was there, I was so taken, oh, I wish I would have had a chance to actually see the Royals while I was there, but, mm -hmm. um, and that didn't happen, but um, it, it's a living history. I mean, I could go to another country where um, the Royals don't exist anymore. Why would I want to? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I know that sounds crazy, but I, I like the fact that the, the Royals have a lineage that goes back how far? And it just keeps going and going and going and going. And I just find that so interesting. I see. Do you have an interest in any of the royal families around Europe, for instance? Um, I do like the um, 
you know, Daniel and his wife, I like them very much. And uh, I believe the sister just moved back from California with her children back, uh, Danish, I believe it's the Danish royal family. They just moved back also, mm -hmm. not sure why, but um, I love them also. And I found it interesting that uh, the second daughter was able to live uh, with, you know, in the, with her husband, who is a financier of some sort, with their children relatively obscurely uh, in the United States without any difficulty. Yeah. Interestingly, uh, Stephen Fry, who I'm sure you know of, he made a remark that countries that have constitutional monarchies, so for example, the United Kingdom, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, the Netherlands, the Benelux countries, are regularly found to be amongst the highest standard of livings and highest happiness indicators <laughs> compared to other countries, which is rather which is rather interesting. Now, it's not to say that that's solely because they have constitutional monarchies, but mm -hmm. that they evidently play some kind of role in relation to how that country has developed and continues to develop a sort of check and balance upon dictatorships and so forth. Do you... Uh, given that you are a, a, a royalist, you take such an interest in, in the royal family, what about the introduction of an American royal family? Do you see that that's something that should happen? That would never happen here. No? <laughs> no, that would never that would never go in the United States, I'm telling you now. Um, which, and remember, we have in our constitution, we do not acknowledge royal titles in the United States. Um, if you happen to have a royal title from somebody, um, it, um, <clears throat> and you want to be an American citizen, you got to give that title up yep. and uh, it, it's just not going to happen here. But let me just say this also, when you're talking about the constitutional monarchies, you know, this, not my King group in Britain, that's, you know, wants to establish, you know, demolish the monarchy. I don't think they realize how much money the Royal family brings into the UK. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I heard it was almost in the billions Charles's coronation brought in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the with the coronation, the amount of money that was brought into the UK, if you were to get rid of the monarchy, I think the economy, uh, I don't know if it would completely collapse, but it would be astronomically bad for the UK. Well, well it's certainly important for tourism. And as a, mm -hmm. a, an old European country, the fact that we have all of these castles and palaces, and also mm -hmm. the fact that the United Kingdom uh, still is a rich country. And we became rich because we were very good at going around the rest of the world and saying, oh, look at that, it's ours now, and, uh, <laughs> and taking it back to Blighty and then telling the rest of the world, this is how you should hold a knife and fork and this is this thing called cricket. So we went around, of course, and uh, uh, there are only a handful of countries that have ne never been invaded by Great Britain that became the United Kingdom. And so all of that helped us create this wealth which uh, translated into... Uh, an industrial empire as well. Mm -hmm. And you're right, because of the pomp and uh, ceremony that goes with it, it's a huge tourist attraction. I think with some of these groups, um, they conveniently put to one side the tourist value of the royal family. And mm -hmm. I think with some, it's this focus on, and one can understand this to a point, is why should you have to show deference to somebody just by virtue of the fact of accident of birth. So historically, of course, you became king because mm -hmm. you were the one that was able to unite a kingdom. So the various warring tribes and factions, you were able to say, right, either through sheer physical means that you would fight or through guile and cunning and bribery, Machiavellian behaviors, which of course sort of fits with what my channel is about, there's a reason why many kings were narcissists, because they had their eye on the prize, they had no empathy for anybody else, and and the pursuit of power attracted them to assert control over various people. So historically, it made sense as to why they got themselves into a position of kingship. And mm -hmm. then, because of the idea that uh, the next king was the uh, first male heir of that uh, incumbent king, the problem was, of course, you didn't necessarily know whether you were going to get somebody similar to the king or a weakling or someone who wasn't really interested in ruling. And so the problem is you might get a strong king who has been able to hold that kingdom together, but then his offspring, offspring is completely unsuitable to the task. 
And as we've seen through many monarchies, there are good kings and bad kings, effective kings and ineffective kings. And of course, today, the level of power that's wielded by the monarchy is nowhere to the level that it once was. So it's, translate, so it's transferred now into more, I think, these groups arguing about why, why should I have to respect somebody who only get, gets a title just because of how they were born? And I think that's where it's important with the royal family, of course, that they demonstrate worth in relation to that title, that they, this idea of service that has to come with it, which is what Queen Elizabeth discharged so brilliantly. Nobody will do it ever like Queen Elizabeth did it. Nobody. Yeah. They can try, but it's uh, not going to happen. Um, and I get what you're saying. It's, and I get it. And you know, we we don't have to respect it. Fine, don't respect them, but respect the work that they do, because they do a lot. They do do a lot of work. When you look at all of the, um, you know, visits to these charities and all the work, especially oh my gosh, Princess Anne. Uh, she's, mm -hmm. No wonder she's the hardest working royal. Three, four, five visits in a day, 365 days a year. Well, I'll take out Christmas. I, you know, you have these people that literally, it's not like they're laying around in their castles and flying off for constant vacations like other people. These people are literally every single day going out to draw attention to good causes to help raise money. It is a life of service. Mm -hmm. And um, I, as you said, some people are better, you know, suited to that than others. Some people decide to, you know, leave and complain constantly about that system. Fine, then leave. But the people that are still there are still committed to a life of service and they're wanting to do it and they're doing it. So and indeed. And I think that's how they have to show their worth. Exactly. That you, you cannot help the fact that you've inherited a title and wealth that goes with that. You didn't ask for that, but that's what you've received. But in order to earn that respect, you've got to demonstrate that with the service. I regularly say that for instance, when you look at what Queen Elizabeth II did, you know, going around a biscuit factory and saying to somebody, what do you do? And then they, you know, they say, oh, well, well, your majesty, what I do is I, I separate the caramel before it goes on the biscuits. That's what I do. And she must be thinking, oh, that's fascinating. And to take an interest in that type of thing, which to me would bore me senseless. And going around the sort of not so attractive parts of the United Kingdom, meeting all these people. And she did it without complaint because she understood and recognized what was necessary. And I'm sure there were times when she would kick off her shoes with with Prince Philip and go, goodness me, you know, thank goodness that day is over. That was a bit tedious, wasn't it? You know, behind closed doors. But she's entitled to do that. And that's the big difference, of course, that you see with the discharge of that obligation of service exactly. is, is to get on with it. You know, it's the never complain, never explain mantra that the Queen had. And of course, we have seen with a certain pair of individuals, and mm. we're going to have to talk about them at some point, Sue, who <laughs> decided, well, that's not that's not for us. Mm. Now, as you probably know in my channel, it's about narcissism and psychopathy, and I've got thousands of videos that are what I call the pure narcissism video. But also I've got a lot about this one's wife. Mm. And she came on my radar very early through yes. obviously having had an involvement with her personally. And then as a consequence of my channel, she proved a fantastic object of analysis for the purposes of narcissism in action. Now, right. from your perspective, give me your mm -hmm. thoughts about her and Harry. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Okay. First of all, um, I, she, when she first got, when they first married, um, several people said to me, I'm worried that engagement interview worried me. And I was like, you know what? She's going to get in there. She's going to do great things. I was solidly behind her, but then it was constantly, they're taking a break. They're on vacation. They're taking a break. She's taking a, and I was like, taking a break from what, mm. what exactly? I mean, <laughs> what, what is happening here? Then when they left, uh, uh, my thing with Harry is, oh my gosh. Okay, here's my thing with both of them. I don't like liars. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm very big on the truth. Even if it hurts, you should tell the truth. Okay. And she got caught saying that, you know, college was paid for by a work study program. That's not true. Her father actually pulled out the receipts. Um, she, she's, she claimed on the Oprah show that 
you know, her sister changed her name back to Markle right when she started dating Harry. We actually, I actually, in some of my videos have shown the documentation. She changed her first name, not her last name. Mm -hmm. uh, that was back in the 90s. She has always been Markle. So that was a lie. Um, you know, she said, I haven't seen my sister up till this. That's not true either. It, the, just the constant lying just drives me insane. And, um, and the fact that she's been caught repeatedly, she's been caught plagiarizing. She goes, you know, when she gave that speech uh, back, um, I can't even remember. It was long, it was before, way before she met Harry. And she's in, the, and she goes, oh, and I got a standing ovation at the end. And the video came out, there was no standing ovation. Yeah. And the speech she gave was plagiarized by uh, the President Eisenhower's wife, Eleanor. Yes. She yeah. totally plagiarized it. She said she gave in one of her speeches. She said, a rising tide, you know, sinks all ships or whatever to the ship. That was from John F. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I went down the list of she she uses other people's words. She doesn't give credit. She's been caught in lie after lie. And the, the constant, like when Harry said, we're the family she never had. What do you mean the family she never had? She has excellent family. There are family photos. She was raised. Everybody's focusing on the Markles. What about Doria's family? Mm -hmm. There's never been a complaint about Doria's family, but yet you never see them. She didn't invite them to the wedding. No. Um, I know that um, even Samantha Markle once said to me, she could have invited her uncle to the wedding, the uncle that got her the internship mm -hmm. in Argentina. Yeah. And she she wasn't there for several months. She was there for six weeks. She couldn't pass the uh, test yeah, and the they yeah. the entrance test, and they sent her back. But it's you know, like Samantha said, if she had invited any of those family members at the reception, everybody talks, and some of the lies that she told to Harry might have come out. So Harry has never even met Thomas Markle or any of the Markle clan. And nor any of Doria's family. And to, to think that he doesn't realize that that's not odd. Um, there's something, you know, he said, ah, the, the clicks and the cameras take me back and they, they just mess with my head. And then here he is constantly standing in front of cameras being clicked and that the flash of lights doesn't seem to bother him. Now, we know that Harry's not the most cerebrally blessed. Correct. But notwithstanding that, it, it is a pretty standard thing that when you're going to marry somebody, that invariably you, where you're the male, traditionally you'd ask your prospective father-in-law for permission to marriage. You'd ask for, can I take your daughter's hand in marriage? Or even if you don't follow that traditional route, you tend to get to know your other part, your partner's family. Exactly. Their parents, their siblings. Their friends as well. And yet with Harry, as we know, he'd not met Thomas Markle Sr. And he's not bothered with the half-siblings either. Correct. And as you've just touched on, why do you think Harry didn't think that was strange that he's never met them? Why do you think that he's not insisted on saying, well, come on, I think, you know, we should meet them? I think it's pretty obvious that Megan's told him horrible, horrible stories mm -hmm. about the family and things that happened to her and made him not want to meet any of his family. Oh, if that person did that to you, I am not interested. I don't want to meet this person. I, I, I want nothing to do with these people. These people are terrible. Um, I think she, she, you know, I recently did a video where I compared Wallace Simpson and her marriage to the former king, to Harry and Meghan. And one of the things was one of Wallace Simpson's friends said, I'm paraphrasing, but said something to the effect of, could you imagine having to live up to this great love that you didn't feel to a man who's completely obsessed with you? And I went, oh my God, that is Meghan and Harry. I think Harry is completely obsessed with Meghan Markle. And do I think that Megan loves Harry? No, I, 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 I don't see it. I don't think she respects him. She wears the pants. He has to do what she says. And um, I, I, their marriage is extremely unequal. You can't have a good marriage if one person is telling the other one what to do constantly. That just doesn't work out well, in my yeah. opinion. Now you, you, you talked about the fact that you don't like liars and 
yes. made reference to some of the many lies that um, she has told. Yes. Do, do you understand why she lies so habitually? Um, well, I mean, I know there are psychological uh, things that make you lie, but I think she has created a world in her head. And I think she lies constantly because she's trying to get everybody to believe you know, like she told everybody, we ate at the all-you-can-eat salad bar because we were so poor. And then come to find out from the TIG, she had dance lessons and ballet lessons. And she was in a private school. And her father took her to all the best restaurants around town. And she claimed she was a latchkey kid. Come to find out her father's limo he used to pick her up and take her to the set of Married with Children. Um, just constantly. I mean, oh, my gosh. I did a deep dive into the Oprah show. And I call it the show because that's what it was. And I counted like 18 lies mm -hmm. in that show from, I didn't know how to curtsy, which we found out later on was a lie, to you know Harry saying, my father cut me off financially, but forgot to mention that before his father cut him off, he gave him several million dollars and then a lump sum payment of several million dollars. That was a lie by omission. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, I never got to ride in a baby seat carrier you know, with my father, and then the pictures come out. He's in the he's on the back of the bike with his father. I think that he has severe psychological problems. I think the palace PR machine did an excellent job with him when he was in the protected bubble of the palace. Now that he's not, it's all coming out. The fact that Harry and Meghan want to be role models for people. Who would want this man who admits to using marijuana, cocaine, magic mushrooms, on a regular basis, still using them, who would want their teenager to use him as a role model? I, I just, I don't get it. I mm -hmm. wouldn't want my kids anywhere near him or her. Well, I, I, <clears throat> you've pointed out there uh, numerous lies that she has engaged in. Mm -hmm. You've fact-checked them yourself. And as you know, many commentators who operate YouTube channels scrutinizing this one's wife and Harry's behavior have done mm -hmm. similarly. And yet she still continues to do, to tell those lies. Yes. And also yes. her lies are pretty easy to demonstrate. To debunk. They're yeah. easy. So why do you think that is? That if she's telling a lie, why do you think she doesn't tell effective lies? Why is she so haphazard in that respect? I think she has some, I, I can't think of what the name of it is right off the top of my head, but I think she has some sort of psychological prop. There are, there is a, a, a diagnosis, I'm not sure what it is, but there is a diagnosis for somebody who lies constantly. And I think she lies, or maybe she just believes that she's so high above everybody that it doesn't matter if she lies. That well, the reason she lies is because those lies her her actual truth. Because yeah, yeah, because what she has to do is because she's a narcissist, she needs to control the moment, not yesterday, not an hour in the future, but the moment. Right. And that means she will say and do whatever is needed in that moment to control the listener, the viewer, whoever it is who's on her radar at that point in time. So if her narcissism deems that the best way to control the audience that she's talking to is to give them a sob story about how we could just afford, a, just about afford a sizzler salad. <laughs> That's what she says. And in that, in that moment, she believes what she's telling you. But then, of course, her narcissism isn't focused on the fact that it can be easily demonstrated that she was eating at uh, better class restaurants because... Oh. In that moment, it's not focused on that. It's focused on what can we say to this audience right now that will make them be controlled? Let's do a pity play about how we could only afford the sizzler salad. And right. then on another occasion, what can we say that makes us sound interesting? And so the narcissism recalls in the depths of her mind that she once watched a cartoon where there was somebody eating noodles at a, a Korean spa or such like. <laughs> so what she then says is, oh, I used to go with my mum and there was lots of naked women wandering around and I'd eat noodles in this Korean spa. And it didn't actually happen. Right. Because, but the narcissism made her believe that it did. 
so that she tells that lie in the moment. And of course, because she's so easily scrutinized, because she's internationally infamous, there is this legion of fact checkers who go, well, have a look around. That didn't happen. And, and like you've done and like many others have done. So her narcissism makes her lie and lie and lie. And because mm. she doesn't care, because she has no emotional empathy, mm. and because her narcissism isn't that evolved, when somebody points out that she's lied, she just ignores it and basically responds by saying, you're a racist or a hater. Oh my gosh, the whole, she has damaged, I just have to make that comment, she has damaged the Black Lives Movement matter. She has she has totally damaged that movement because now anybody who cries racism, she's so overused it that when there really is racism, nobody's listening anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, she's actually damaged their movement. I don't think if people realize that. And I mean, she said herself in one of her in her Netflix show, you know, nobody treated me like I was a black woman until I was in the UK. Well, that's because you didn't acknowledge yourself as black. Mm -hmm. Even your own agent on the Netflix show said he thought you were Italian. So she didn't tell people that she was, you know, half black, half white. She didn't tell people that. No. Um, and then, but then suddenly when she could weaponize it, suddenly it's, I'm your sister, I'm black. I, you know, and she exactly. tried to weaponize it. And initially I think it might've worked. Now it's just not, it's just no, not most, working. Mo most people have seen through that aspect. Of, yes. Uh, and, and this is something that I regularly explain to people where I'm advising them about narcissism is that with your less evolved narcissist, which includes this one's wife, that if you give them enough rope, they'll hang themselves. And oh my goodness. she's been on the scene now um, because not many people knew her when she was in suits, despite what she tries to claim. She's I never been, even heard of that show before no, she married Harry. No, nor, nor, had, nor had I. And... So since she appeared, which was with Harry, that's nearly eight years now. And so we've eight years worth of material that's built up as she says one thing and then you look back at her past and that proves that what she's saying is, is incorrect and the spats with the family and it all paints a picture. And yet, though there are a particular group, of course, as we know, there's the name of the Sussex squad, the Sugars, Ooh. who still can't accept the evidence as it stands now have you had much dealings with this group with the sussex squad yeah um after what boozy did to me yes i did <laughs> okay for, for those who might not be familiar with what boozy did to you perhaps you'd like to uh, expand on that sue um christopher i did uh, christopher boozy came out on the scene he did a uh, interview and a magazine interview and I decided to do some digging into him. And I went on his Twitter account and found he was talking about hate accounts. And I went on his Twitter account and found that he was running a hate account against the royal family. He had put up a lot of horrible tweets about William and Catherine. Then I did a little bit more digging and I found out that his girlfriend at the time, I believe they've been married since then, but I'm not 100% for sure. His girlfriend at the time was being evicted from her apartment. He decided to declare bankruptcy to stop the eviction. Uh, as soon as they were able to move, they vacated the bankruptcy. It never went through, as far as I can tell. It's just a ploy to keep them from being evicted. Um, he uh, put out uh, tweets with my full name, my age, the state where I live, that I was an emergency room nurse. I'm now retired. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, what my husband did for a living and my son's autism diagnosis. And he put it all out on the web. And um, some people wrote to him and said, I can't believe you did that. And he was like, well, she's harassing my family. Never harassed his family. Um, he, he's, he tries to rile the Sussex squad up mm -hmm. to get them to attack, to do something. But as I myself have warned the Sussex squad, be careful. Because if you do something and say, well, Boozy said or Boozy did, Christopher Boozy is going to sit back and go, I never told you to do that. I never said to attack. I never said to hurt anybody. And you're going to be left hanging. So, But he's very good at putting out these messages to try to rile them up to get them to attack. Yeah. Um, and um, he was, people were talking about, oh, turn in her nursing license. Try to get her nursing license pulled. I was laughing because you can't just call, you have to do something illegal to get your nursing license pulled. 
Yeah, well, they're not the brightest of individuals. Not the brightest that, bulbs. Which is clear. Um, were, you not, were you not minded to take some action after that uh, flagrant abuse of your rights by disclosing that information? I, you know what? You give them more oxygen, they just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, I knew eventually my name would come, sooner or later, my name would come out. I thought that telling people about my son's autism was a little, you know, it was meant to hurt me. What Indeed. he's done, however, is create a little bit of a monster because my son uh, is aware of what he did. My son, um, I thought, wow, they, th th this state would never give him a license to carry or let him have a gun. I mean, you know, but no, they did. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's well aware of what Christopher Boozy looks like. I think if he ever tried to come near my kid, my kid would pr probably injure him severely. Um, and he's created that situation by involving my son. He claims that I made up tweets. Now, anybody who knows me knows that I am the least technical person, as you yourself found out this morning. <laughs> I'm not very good with technology, which is why my videos are not near the level of some other people's videos. Mm -hmm. I'm not very good with technology. Um, he claims I made up the tweets that were readily available. His own, he's, he gets upset. He, the reason he was really upset was I had mentioned his daughter. Uh, yes. The problem is I never said her name, her age, where she lived or what she does for a living. Mm. I simply said his daughter has accused him of abuse. Now the Sussex yes. squad has decided they're not going to address the fact that she has tweeted across multiple platforms. The, well, that was, it was it was in the public domain that she accused yes. him of being not a very good father. Oh my God! Easy, easy, easiest her, way to paraphrase it. One of her tweets, she claims he drug her into a room and her favorite stuffed animal was hanging by a noose. Mm -hmm. He had hung her favorite toy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, if what she wrote was true, I can't I can't even fathom what she went through as a child. But for some reason, anyway, the Sussex squad has decided that they're just going to ignore <laughs> all of this information. The fact that he ran a cryptocurrency group, which scammed a lot of people out of money. Um, He's constantly, th he threatened for two years, I'm going to sue her and I'm going to sue this YouTuber and I'm going to sue that YouTuber. And I was like, bring it on. He did a fundraiser mm -hmm. to get the money to sue me. And then he took the money from the fundraiser and he never filed a lawsuit. And that's because he doesn't have a case and he yeah. knows he doesn't have a case. Yeah. But um, he tried very hard to get the Sussex squad to do something. And, uh, you know, I still have my license. <laughs> Nothing Indeed. has happened. You know. what, why do you why do you think that so many members of the Sussex squad, notwithstanding the evidence that shows how Boozy has behaved, the tweets mm -hmm. from his daughter, the allegations about the cryptocurrency, the mm -hmm. hypocrisy that he exhibits where he talks about misinformation then engages in the very same himself? Exactly. Why do you think so many individuals in the Sussex squad fail to pick up on that with him? and also the various poor behaviors and hypocrisies of uh, this one's wife. Because I think they want so badly to believe. Yeah. They want so badly. She is our black princess. She's she's this she's they just can't accept that they've been lied to. Yeah. They just and I also think there might be a, and I'm not trying to be mean. I think some of these people might have a very lower level of education. And they don't do their own research. They just go wherever the wind leads them. Um, you know, which again, you're getting it like this whole thing with the 43% Nigerian. Somebody else pulled Meghan Markle's family tree and went through it. And there's absolutely no way that she can be 43% Nigerian. And she's yet to show any proof. She yeah. simply has said, so people just want to believe, but that doesn't make it true. No, oh, indeed. I recall. Uh, when I first started uh, writing about this one's wife and my videos and I called her narcissism at a very early stage, that I was contacted by one of my clients, a black lady, and she's from San Francisco, lovely lady. And she said, oh, HG, she said, I was so disappointed when I watched your videos, not in you. She just said, I knew that you were right because of the way that you dissect the evidence and You'd always help me with evidence when she was getting away from a narcissist and I helped her in relation to all of that. And she said, I was so disappointed because I honestly thought that one of one of us, one of us had had finally got into the hallowed land, 
that a person of colour had got into the royal family and then she turns out to be like this and it's just so disappointing. And she's a perfectly reasonable, lovely individual and not somebody driven by vitriol and, and hatred. And I think their failure to understand and recognise what she is, some because she serves their own agenda. So some of, you know, like Dr. Shouty Shola, she yeah. serves an agenda for her. Mizan Harriman, she serves an agenda for him and so forth. So they're, in, they're invested because they can get something out of her. And then there are others who I think take it on board because they may well have been paid to do it. And then there are others who lack the critical faculty to analyse the evidence to understand what she truly is. And as you say, can't accept that the dream has been shattered. And exactly. instead, it's far easier just to keep shouting, you're wrong, you're a racist, you're a liar, than go, actually, I've been had. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, and then when you mentioned Meeson, I just went, oh, my God, because, you know, when William and Catherine were coming to the United States for the Earthshot Prize, and suddenly that whole racism row exploded mm -hmm. with that Nengozi Falani, whose real name was Marlene. And I thought, how did that happen? And then I found the pictures from her charity which were taken by Meeson Harriman, who's good friends with Meghan Markle. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that was a total, she wasn't even invited that day. That was a total setup. She was mm -hmm. not invited. She wasn't supposed to be there. She was a plus one. Yeah. And she searched out this woman. And then she lied and said, I was against the wall the whole time. I was so uncomfortable. And this was just, and then the pictures came out of her standing in the middle of the room talking to the queen. Yeah. I mean, it's like, boom, boom, lie, lie, lie. You lied, you lied. Then she got her apology. Then she came back and said she didn't get her apology. Then she had to step down from her charity. Yeah, because and again, this goes back to the point that I habitually make about going to the evidence. And what mm -hmm. is interesting is, as you'll know from when I talk about her, I provide the explanations vis-a-vis -vis her narcissism, what it all means and why she does as she does because she's a narcissist. So I will take, for instance, a news story and I regularly respect the intelligence of my viewers and say, you can make your own minds up as to whether you believe this news article or not. That's a matter mm -hmm. for you. But if it's correct, this is what it tells us about her narcissism or this is something that appeared on Twitter again it's not been verified, so you can read into it what you will, but it but it, it, it may well be something that a narcissist could do because of these factors, et cetera. And mm -hmm. of course, yourself and there are, there are other channels that I think go into things and, um, you know, go and do a bit of digging at times to find out uh, whether the things that have been said and done are accurate. And that accords with what I regularly explain to my clients about always go to go to the evidence. When you're dealing mm -hmm. with a narcissist, you go to the evidence and let that speak for itself. And mm -hmm. it's similar here. But again, there's always going to be individuals that will not be able to comprehend the evidence. And the point is, you share that for those that want to embrace it. And with those, and there'll always be them, there'll always be sort of the tin hat brigade. You just have to leave it there and they will complete, they will continue to bellyache. But there'll, there's also be a group that are there to be persuaded, the sort of swinging voters who are kind of, and you see it more and more with people who say, yeah, well, I, I used to really like her, but as time has gone on, I've started to think, actually, she's let me down or she hasn't, um, she hasn't behaved herself and I'm disappointed in it. And uh, I started to realise that and I've, I've gone off her. She'll always have a rump of rabid supporters. They mm -hmm. will never completely go away. Never well, them. let me just say that her popularity in the United States is circling the drain in a massive way. So she and Harry managed to kill any popularity they had in the UK. Now their popularity in the United States is very quickly going down the drain. And I believe that they're looking at Africa because um, <laughs> Donald Trump has said that if he's elected, and it's looking like that very well may happen, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, that he's going to deport Harry if his visa paperwork was not done correctly. Now, of course, we know Biden's side has come out and said it doesn't matter as long as Biden's in office, they won't deport Harry, which I thought was a very bold statement to make yeah. that he's not being held to the same standard as everybody else who comes into the United States. But I think part of the thing is they, they people now in the UK don't like them. People in the United States don't like them. And so now they're looking where they can go next. Where would you say in terms of, sorry to cut across you, in in terms of in in the US, because this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's more people are just disinterested or is it actual dislike for them? No, I think people dislike them. Um, When you have two people that constantly beat on about woe is me, look what my family has said, look what my family has done. They didn't let me come to Trooping the Color. I wasn't invited to, while you're sitting, while you're a multimillionaire sitting in your mansion with two healthy children and you're unable to count the blessings in your life. Instead, it's constant bleeding and whining. After, I mean, they've been whining now for five years. Mm-hmm. And at some point you have to go, my gosh, please stop. Please stop. Um, but if you have nothing else to offer. They have nothing else to offer. Listen, when Spot- when they signed that Spotify deal and it took them years to produce, and I think they ne- ended up needing like 21 producers and they had to bring other people in to get stuff done. Yeah. And then their, the, the Architects podcast was basically, um, in the beginning it was a novelty, but it slowly went down until it was back behind whale sounds for sleep. And then Archetype said they didn't meet the metrics and they got rid of them. And then, you know, Megan did the whole, oh, we're so proud of what we created and it's an amicable split and come to find out that wasn't true. They didn't do anything. And that's why Spotify got rid of them. It's the same thing with Netflix. They did the live to lead, which was something that somebody else did and they bought it, did a little bit of narration. Pearl got canceled. Part of Invictus didn't even make it onto the top 10. Mm -hmm. Um, And the Beckham's docu-series has blown Harry and Meghan's docu-series, which again was just a six-part wine fest, where they addressed all of the the rumors about, you know, she's claiming it's it's not my fault that Harry's friends abandoned him. Yes, it is. You you treated them horribly. You cut him off from his friends. He's had enough. I mean, I could go on and on about that Netflix series where, where they used pictures from the Harry Potter premiere to try to show that she was being chased because there were no pictures. They showed a picture of her cutting some fish saying, this is what I looked like with when William and Catherine came over. And that picture was from the TIG from 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the point is, they're just whiny, crybaby people. And now they're rushing because their Netflix um, contract is coming up next year. Suddenly, it's, oh my God, we got to get something out. So she's doing this cooking show, this ARO. And he's doing the polo. Who the hell cares about polo? That's only for the super uber rich elite. Mm-hmm. And I might add that Netflix didn't announce these shows. Harry and Meghan announced the shows. They have to make the shows, produce the shows, put them together, and then present them to Netflix. Netflix can say yes or no. And no. if Netflix says no, their contract is going to end. Now they have no source of income because Spotify is gone, Netflix will be gone. They need approximately, I believe I read, they need approximately $20 million a year to fund their lifestyle between the nannies, the cooks, the maids, maintenance on the house, power, gas, water, pool man, landscaper, security, which is why Harry keeps fighting for this security because he doesn't want to pay the exorbitant bill anymore. Um, You know, clothing for her because I don't believe she's getting freebies anymore. I think that's come to an end. And um, so if this Netflix thing doesn't do well, they're literally going to be in serious financial trouble. Well, I think it's safe to say that Netflix will part company with them yes. because it hasn't they haven't delivered as a consequence of her entitlement and laziness and uh, ditto exactly. with Harry. Now, it's quite clear um, you, you speak with considerable uh, conviction and, and uh, uh, passion about the topic. Yeah. Um, what about just simply saying, forget them, forget them. I'm not going to talk about them any longer. Mm-hmm. That, I'm going to get them. I'm going to wash them out of my hair. Mm-hmm. Why not do that? I would still have plenty of material because my, like I said, my channel, I cover 
the king, the queen, Sophie, and I call her super secret weapon Sophie. I've been calling her that for years. Recently, the press has been calling her that too. So it's Sophie and Edward, um, Lady Louise and, and James, uh, Andrew, Fergie, Beatrice, Eugene. Believe me, there's plenty of material. But the problem is Harry and Meghan don't give us a rest. Constantly putting stuff out into the public. Constantly. Con like every day they are in our faces with something else. Mm -hmm. This thing that she tried with the jam and the dog biscuits, you know, I... I don't usually curse. Can I say one one curse word? You say as many as you like. That are right. Um, I want to know when Nacho became Megan's bitch boy, because <laughs> there is no way Harry can't even have a friend, because there is no way that Nacho put those pictures out when he did without Megan telling him to and telling him when to do it. It was everybody knew that something was going to happen because it's so predictable. They've been doing that for years. Like I said, when Harry, when when William and Catherine threw it came into Boston for the Earth Shop Prize. They released the Netflix trailer. They released an Invictus trailer. They did everything possible to ruin that trip for them. Because Absolutely. Well, she, <clears throat> she has mm -hmm. considerable form with the necessity of upstaging people because- She tries, she because tries. Her, because her narcissism cannot stand the fact that attention is going elsewhere. It makes her feel unimportant. It makes her yeah. feel vulnerable. So her narcissism basically whispers in her ear in her do subconscious something. and say, do, do something. You need to upstage them. I suspect, Sue, that she probably had Harry in the chicken coop with a taser mm -hmm. applied to his pink pods and had a Zoom call with Nacho saying, Nacho, if you don't put out the dog biscuits and raspberry jam on, on your socials, Harry's going to get his pink pod zapped. And Harry was there going, oh, oh, please, please, Nacho, Nacho, darling, please save me. And Nacho you know, said, I'll, I'll do it to save my friend. I've said that before. She cut his balls off. She put him in a top drawer. There's a bomb next to them and she's holding a detonator. So he's got to do whatever she wants. Oh, but, oh, exactly. Well, it, it demonstrates as well. And I've got videos uh, out about, you know, this the preposterousness of this, now the raspberry jam and dog biscuits. Please. And how, utterly pathetic it is that that's all that she can muster in order to try and take the shine off the she used Radiant to be a Princess royal Bale. duchess she was a royal duchess and now she's flogging jam yeah oh and, and her instagram account is now going backwards it is because she's been keeping an eye on it yeah now when you consider how many people there are in the world when she launched that i mean i think sussex royal got like eight million people in like three hours it was like a a, a record now she she started this ARO website and I think it went up to like 650,000, which is really nothing. There's some rumors that a lot of those are paid bots. Indeed. And now the numbers are going backwards because people are like, really? You're like, she's so scattered that instead of produce, she should, here's what happened. She launched that ARO during the Diana Awards to try to yes. really as William was walking up to the podium to try to upstage William. She yeah. also upstaged her husband. ARO was not ready to be launched, but she needed something. So she launched the ARO. That was her mistake. The copyright's not in place yet. She still doesn't have a chef. She doesn't have products to sell. Um, she launched early and she yeah. did well, that. She, <clears throat> she, you're right. Again, she used it as a device to try and upstage other people because she can't stand for them to be in the limelight and not her. And she also, because of her magical thinking and her sense of entitlement, assumes that if she turns up and it's her, everybody will just go, that's brilliant. Let's buy everything. And that yeah. things will magically appear on the shelves because it's her. And she thought, I'll create this. There'll be a massive buzz around it. There'll be millions of people signing up for it. And then I can just turn to somebody else and say, do you want to buy it off me? for X million, even though it's never traded a day in its life, because look how right. popular it is. And as you point out, for someone who is as globally infamous as she is, to get, what was it, 620,000 followers is woeful underachievement compared to other people who are similarly famous or perhaps even a little bit less famous than she is. Now, with ARO, I spoke to a PR expert and explained it in a video as to how she described it as the patient is dead and should be thrown in a shallow grave because it's now <laughs> three months, three months since that launch. And what have we had? A stupid video, a beige 
landing site that just asks for your email address, jam scam, some now some raspberry jam and some dog biscuits. That's the totality of building interest in this product. And there's nothing you can buy. There's no engagement. There's no creation that goes with it. Can I point out also, just as a medical person, <clears throat> I wouldn't buy any of that anyway, because there's no label to tell you what's in it, first of all. So how do you know you're not going to have an allergic reaction to it? Yeah. And number two, before you make stuff like that in your kitchen, you're supposed to get something from the county that says that your kitchen is clean. And, you yeah. know, um, I haven't been able to find any documents that she received that certificate. So I certainly wouldn't be eating anything that she sent out because you don't know what's in it or how it was prepared. Well, I haven't actually seen anybody eat it. Even Nacho looked like he was grimacing the first time around when he <laughs> had it. He had it near his mouth, but he didn't look yes. like he'd actually swallowed. And and, and again, yes. you're you're flogging sugar to people who who basically say sugar isn't allowed in my body. So exactly. why why she's uh, but those are the only person she can turn to her are jam fluences because nobody else is interested. But you uh, notice mm. that as her stuff has come out, the numbers of jam sell, being sold by the king, yeah. he's sold out. It's going through the roof. And she also claimed that the king's stuff was not organic. It absolutely is organic. She's claiming hers is organic, but there's no proof of that. Whereas the king has already provided proof that everything is grown at high growth yeah. and it's all organic. As ever, Lots of people can see this, and the more that she speaks and the more that she does, she just gives more grist to the mill, so plenty of mm -hmm. people can go, that's another thing that's wrong. His jam is organic, and yours isn't, but because she has to tell that lie in the moment to try and control mm -hmm. whoever she's speaking to, her narcissism causes her to say whatever it can, regardless of where it might lead to next, because the narcissism doesn't care about what comes next, it only cares about the now. And that's mm -hmm. why she, like so many other narcissists of her ilk, become exposed because the lie that they tell in the moment becomes then exposed by what happens next or some information from the past. Now, yeah. I've spoken many times about how she's been on the downward spiral and it's like circling the drain and it's getting mm -hmm. little, it's getting faster and faster. Where do you see all of this ending up? What do you, what do you think will happen? You know, I hate to see any marriage fail, but um, what I think eventually is going to happen is I think that Netflix is going to go bye bye. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have an income stream. Um, I think they're going to end up in financial trouble. Um, or maybe not because Harry is turning 40 soon and supposedly he's getting like a ton more money in from inheritance. Yeah. It, it was her was told to say when he turns 40, there's like another 20 million coming in, but the way she spends money, that'll be gone in no time. I feel that, um, you know, I, I usually try not to watch too many other YouTubers because I don't want their information to influence mine. Mm -hmm. We all report on the same thing, but everybody has a different style. Yes. Um, I, for one, always back up everything I say with my articles, my pictures, and my videos. I don't just do clickbait. I, yeah. I if I say it, it's, it's being reported widely, okay? Um, I have a feeling that, um, the marriage is going to fail mm -hmm. because if, uh, and it could be that Harry is going to be deported, um, if his visa is not in order and do I think she would go with him? No, I think Harry has reached the end of his value. Now I did watch in what I was saying, I did watch Neil Sean this morning. I try not to, like I said, I try not to watch other YouTubers, but I watched Neil Sean this morning, according to Neil Sean, um, Harry wanted his children to watch Trooping the Color because that's their heritage. And Megan was like, nope, and wouldn't allow them to watch it. Harry seems to be, from the reports that's coming out, Harry seems to be waking up a little bit and realizing yeah. I might th there might be a problem here. I've lost my father, my brother, my sister-in-law, my nieces, you know, my niece, my nephews. I've lost all my, I've given up all my friends. Hugh, Hugh Grovesner had the social event of the season. I wasn't even invited. I've lost it all. And what do I have for it? I have a wife who's acting this way or doing this way. Or I mean, I feel like he's finally coming out of his trance. Well, I spoke about recently, he's in the find out phase in oh. terms of two aspects finding out that life is nowhere near as sweet as he once imagined it to be when he was in the golden period with her. Mm -hmm. 
and he's finding out just how horrible she can be. And then he's also finding out, hang on a second, this is stacking up for me. And as you pointed out, I've lost friends. And at first, when that person's under the narcissist spell, they believe that they've got someone magical in the narcissist and it's almost worth sacrificing those people to stay with the narcissist. After all, if the narcissist is wonderful and brilliant and kind and loving. Well, life's great and that's the person you're spending most of your time with. But of course, it's an illusion that the narcissist will create. And now he's not being treated well by, he hasn't for a number of years, but he's starting to realize as more instances of I'm missing all of the events that I once used to go to and who's stopping me from going? She is. I don't have anything to do with my brother. And why did that come about? Because of her. Yeah. My sister-in-law, who I was very close to, is unwell. And I've not really been able to find out anything about her progress. Why am I being blocked? Because of my wife. And she will, of course, continue to feed him with propaganda to make him seem like it's everybody else's fault. But he will start to th see mm, some of these things don't quite stack up. I still don't think it's going to be sufficient for him to break, make a break for the border himself. I see it as more likely she's going to just ditch him rather than the other way around. That's, yes, but can I just say one thing? When I, I think Harry, Harry, the real reason I think, the it, I don't think it's her per se, why the family is not talking to him. I think it's him. After all, he... Gail King went on the news after the Oprah show and said, well, I'm not trying to break news, but I spoke with Harry and he had a conversation with his brother and nothing was resolved. That to me was the point where the Royal family said, we can't even have a private conversation. It ends up on good morning America. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was from that point on that they cut communication with him. Then he wrote despair. You know, he's always going on about if you're going to release leaking and planting and you're damaging my family, that's where I draw the line. That's what he said to Tom Bradby. <clears throat> when he was denying that he'd called the family racist, which of course he did. Mm -hmm. He was trying to correct the narrative. Um, but that's what, but but yet he had no trouble in his book putting in private text messages between Megan and Catherine and releasing private information. Did I really need to know that William was circumcised? Why would you tell me that? Mm -hmm. Like just, he had no problem spilling the most intimate details of his family, but he sees nothing wrong with that because it enables him to curry favor with her. And then they're in, they're in this awful shared fantasy together where they're thinking, aren't we the clever ones? Yes. And, we're, and we're taking the mick out of them. And of course, she's repeatedly said to Harry, your, your family is horrible. Your family yes. haven't treated you well. And he's right. had a resentment that's there and she's cultivated it. Because narcissists Correct. are very good at that. Narcissists Correct. are very good at finding a vulnerability and a weakness and playing on it. So his resentment at always being the spare, at being number two, she's basically said, you should be the god, Harry. But you now, should be the king. But now he's the spare for her. He went from being yeah. the spare to being the spare. To, when, when you read his book, which, by the way, FYI, I did not read. Yeah. When you read his book, though, I've been told it says that he's whining about getting a smaller room at the castle. Yeah. Getting one less sausage. Oh, yeah, sausage gate. Getting, Shocking. I mean, I, I just never, again, somebody who could not be thankful for the blessings in his life of having this great privileged life, never having to pay a bill, getting like $2 million a year from daddy personally to do whatever you want because you don't have to pay for security or a house or anything. And yet you don't see the blessings of that. I, I, I just, I, yeah. But Harry, Harry has lost all trust with his family. I don't think he's going to be able to get it back. I think him flying into the UK to spend 15 minutes with his dad when his father's cancer was announced and then flying back knowing that he was going to have to be at the NFL handing out an award mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. Um, that was a PR stunt to me. I don't think he got anywhere with his dad. I think uh, he, you know what I think he did? I think he offered to come back and help. And yeah. I think the royal family said no. And with that, let me just also say, well, I've still got that train of thought. Megan must be seething because could you imagine if they had not left the royal family with Catherine out and the king out for their treatments, how she and Harry could have really shown and just been the total center of attention. No, oh, she'd have looked to have taken over. Oh my God. Well, she already tried that. That didn't work. But I feel like, she wanted to be top dog. I heard that she she and Harry asked for the Duchy of Cornwall to be split between 
the two brothers and that was a no. Mm. And then she wanted to move into Windsor Castle and the queen said no. And then she wanted, fra I think she looked at like where um, Edward and Sophie live in that huge mansion and where Andrew lives and where, you know, where all the, the ch children live. But these are the children, not the grandchildren. And then, oh, look where William and Catherine were living. Well, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester moved out of their apartment next door so that it could be renovated for them. But after their fallout with William and Catherine, they didn't want to live next door. So I think she thought that they were going to get Frogmore House. Yeah. And instead, she ended up in this 6,000 square foot, seven bedroom monstrosity and then complained about how small it was. Yeah. I've just never, I mean, my house is quite small. <laughs> 2,000 square feet. It's perfect, though, for me and my husband in our retirement age. No steps. It's perfect. But I've just never seen, if somebody were to hand me $2 million a year, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Well, that's the difference between you and a narcissist. So with her she is always like a background app being governed by her narcissism which is saying why is theirs bigger than mine rather than thinking what i've got here is fantastic yes she's envious because she believes that she should always have the best she always believes that she's the center of the universe so narcissism powers her to think that way so even though she could be which she is wealthy and she lives in a mansion in monte shit show the fact is she needs to be recognized. She needs to be seen. She needs to be popular. And she can't achieve all of those things because her narcissism actually gets in the way. And that's the interesting thing that her narcissism powers her to try and attain those things. But it hasn't been effective enough at keeping her in the position that she's got to. It got her there, but it can't keep her there. And it keeps misfiring, resulting in all of these gaffes that she commits, the schoolgirl errors and the faux pas that yeah. makes people turn against her and dislike her which in turn means that she's no longer as mar marketable as she once was, which means that the money isn't going to flow. So right. having got herself into what many people would say is quite an enviable position, she has, to use the technical phrase, fucked it up as a consequence of trying to go further, which has always been driven by her narcissism. In a way, she's like a card player who doesn't know when to stop gambling because yes. she's, got, she's gambled her way up to this point and most people would say, hey, back out now. You, you've got the prince. You've got the mansion. You're known around the world. Or even before they moved to the United States, you're part of the royal family. You've got wealth. You've got privilege. You've got people running around doing whatever you want. You could be loved around the world by showing service. S stop now. But she's incapable of doing so she because her narcissism that. won't let her. You know, I always hear about, oh, they give money to charity. And but it's not their money. It's money oh, that it's people put into money. Archwell. Yeah. Right. And 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 I have to tell you, I think the last thing left for the two of them, literally, is Invictus, which Megan has literally taken over. It's not Harry's anymore. It's Megan's. No. And no. they turned it into a cash cow. And I have not forgotten that not that long ago, two or three high level uh, people at Invictus were shuffled. They were removed from their jobs because they pointed out that there, even though Canada was giving them like $30 million, there was gonna be like a $20 million shortfall due to Harry and Meghan's security, clothing, travel, um, accommodations. And um, I question if they're multimillionaires, why aren't they paying that themselves? Why isn't that money going towards the, the needy veterans? What is, you know, yeah. in well, again. Said it's become her, her thing now, her, I she operates with this huge sense of entitlement whereby her money is her money and other people's money is her money. So she engages mm -hmm. in this asset appropriation because she has no boundary recognition. She has right. no emotional empathy. She doesn't, it doesn't concern her that this money, take for example, the Nigeria trip, oh, the, 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 the Department of, of Defense or the equivalent there paid for uh, their accommodation, their flights, et cetera, their security detail in a country that could be spending that money much more effectively and so you so most people would think hang on a second you're meant to be this kind caring individual why did you expect them to fund you and the reason is she isn't a kind and caring individual she has no emotional empathy for how it impacts upon them and it's similar with the way that they've behaved in relation to the charity to the foundation correct it was supposed to be for invictus you only heard about invictus once the rest of the time it was the megan show everything was about megan 
Um, she was dressed inappropriately. Everybody there was completely covered. She was always armless. But that dress she wore to the school was beyond inappropriate. Yeah. And a lot of Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians have come out on social media and, you know, in a country where the average income, I think, is like $10 a month. People are living hand to mouth. It is one of the poorest countries. And a lot of people in the country are saying, why did you do this? Why didn't you give the money to the people? You know, when they went to that um, luncheon, where she was wearing that completely, it was like a tube top dress. Yeah. Um, they went to the luncheon and there's a video of them being pulled up on the stage and a song was being played. That's like the song of Nigeria. Like everybody likes this song. And Harry and Megan were asked to dance with these people and yeah. Megan and Harry didn't want to dance. And they literally yeah. walk off the stage and the woman literally goes, cut the music, stop yeah. it. They yeah. couldn't even be nice and dance for five minutes. And they literally hand their gifts to James Holt, who's running around behind them, and they leave the venue. Her mm -hmm. behavior was all about me, me, me. And then when the Sussex Squad pictures came out and you realized that they were trucked in because these were not public events, they were brought in yeah. to, to, to crowd Megan and go, oh, Sussex Squad, Sussex Squad. And, you're lo and you look at these pictures and you realize this is a total fake setup. You know, the other thing that upset me about that trip, besides the fact that it really wasn't for Invictus, it was for Megan. Um, the other thing that bothered me was, again, people there are so hungry and so poor, and yet they had a five course meal. You had a choice of five courses at that luncheon that she went to in that white dress. And it was reported that neither Harry nor Megan ate one bite of food. They ate all their food in the hotel. It was like a on the top floor, it had a kitchen. They brought their own chef with them. Yeah. And the chef cooked them their, their food. So here they're being offered all this food that other people would kill for, and they didn't even eat one bite. Yeah. Oh. Maybe she was worried somebody might gather her DNA. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know oh. why that was. But um, I, I thought the tour was shameful, especially that dress at the, the last dress at the polo match where she turned to the side and showed her complete breast. She yeah. didn't even wear, I mean, I think the problem with her is she's a she's a mid forties woman and she's still dressing and acting like she's twenty years old. Well, that's because she thinks that she is because yeah, that's the, a little scary. Well, it's the distortion field of her narcissism that wraps around her that makes her see, and and that's why she dresses as badly as she does because yes. nobody would look in the mirror and dress as badly as she does and go, I look great, but she does because <laughs> she honestly thinks that she does. Now, before we close, one yes. um point you made earlier on about Sue was about clickbait videos yes. and um, how obviously you don't go in for it and no. what, I, what, I've, what, what I've noticed is quite interesting. Once in a while I'll come across material where it will say something like uh, Hannah Waddingham dressed down uh, this one's wife or this one's wife thrown out of the NAACP awards, things mm -hmm. like that. And of course, they're usually three minutes in length, these videos done by a robot AI voice. And it's mm -hmm. quite clearly utter bunkum. And yet you mm -hmm. see that they could get, you know, several thousand views, several hundred comments as people don't actually digest that it's utter nonsense. And then off it goes around the Internet. And right. I regularly explain that this behavior is dangerous because it plays into the narrative that this one's wife articulates, which is there's lots of lies about me. Look, here's some more. And of course, where she can point to what are clearly lies, she mm -hmm. will then use that to point to instances of genuine criticism of her and say, well, they're just lying too, right. like this video to try and shut people down. And what I've noticed is that in order to debunk these videos and point out to people that there, there was no equivalent reportage of this event across any form of media, and indeed that the actual footage that they're showing, for instance, a supposed interview between, say, Stephen Colbert and this one's wife, it didn't actually happen. Correct. You see in the comments people saying, oh, but HG, you've engaged in clickbait in reporting about the clickbait. And I find it interesting because there's quite clearly certain people out there that they really, truly want to believe it. And when you point out that it's not true, rather than the say, thank you for pointing out that that's not true, they turn their irritation on you for Correct. almost denying them the satisfaction of learning something horrible about this one's wife. My thing is, Lord, 
Um, I don't want to, I'm not, I am not because anybody who really follows my channel knows I don't body shame. I don't call names. I usually don't curse. And I just try to put out good content. But I did put out a video alive a few months ago. I woke up one morning and got um, like 200 messages. Did you see this person's video? This person said they spoke to this person and blah, blah, blah. And I, and I even in my live was five minutes long. And I said to everybody, first of all, stop commenting or thank you for letting me know, but there's nothing I can do about it. I didn't call the person's name out. I don't do that either. But those kinds of stories, and I did say this in my live, those kinds of stories damage the credibility of everybody else who's trying to be honest in their reporting. They're Absolutely. trying so hard to make sure, which is why in my videos, if I if I give my opinion of something, I will back it up with pictures, video, reports. I won't just come out and say, I, I saw this person from afar and she was fighting with him and blah, 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 blah. But I have nothing to prove it because that is that kind of stuff is clickbait. Yep. And it damages the credibility of everybody else. It and but, but, I, but I have to tell you, some people like those salacious titles because a lot of those channels that are doing click, clickbait are, they're huge. Whereas I'm at 72,000. But the only difference, be, I think a big difference also with me is I don't see my other YouTubers as competition. Um, I, um, I gave a shout out to Parody Whitney and her channel took off. I gave a shout out to the Sidley Twins. Their channel took off. I helped Megan Smoll start her channel and I helped her, I taught her how to edit videos um, mm -hmm. in the beginning. I, I don't see other channels as competition because like I said before, we all do it differently. And so I say the more the merrier, but you should be careful what you put out and it should yep. be, the tr it should be the truth, not her truth, not your truth, the truth or the truth that's being reported I can't tell you how many how many um, messages have recently been put on some of my videos. I heard Megan's cooking show was canceled, but there's nothing about it in the media. You no. heard that from another YouTuber who put it up without or who said it without any proof. The taping continues. It will be continuing until June 25th. It has not been canceled. Um, I, I don't know where people get this stuff. They get it from other YouTubers who are putting out clickbait because people like salacious stuff. But you should try to stick to the truth, in my opinion. Indeed, it, it is problematic because people can do rather well out of the creation of the videos. Correct. And for my own part, I've got several thousand videos, many of which are nothing to do with this one's wife. They're about exactly. narcissism, they're about psychopathy, they're about various aspects of it, they're about other narcissists that exist, celebrity ones, you know, I talked about Amber Heard. Uh, talked about the situation with Johnny Depp, talked about uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, I've talked about Vladimir Putin, I've talked about oh. Donald Trump, Joe Biden, lots of different lots of different subjects. Right. And naturally, this one's wife gets a lot of attention. And I have the benefit of a sort of large base of information, the same way that you talk about other royals and not just her. But mm -hmm. I think for some I think for some channels, that is all that they talk about. And yeah. I think there's a degree of it might be financial incentive. It might just be the addictive nature of getting lots of views that there comes a point whereby there's maybe not too much to say so that they fall into the trap of then generating stuff which isn't particularly based on anything. And as you point out, the danger of doing so is twofold to my mind. The first is what they've stated then enters the mainstream and gets bandied around and all of a sudden nobody really knows where it comes from but it's it's spoken about it and it finds its way onto x finds its way onto quora as though it's the gospel truth mm -hmm. and then secondly it plays into this one's wife's hands because you can say this is and she can quite legitimately if she chose to do so could say that isn't true and that isn't true and that isn't true so then people sympathize with her because they are clear and obvious lies that are being said about her, which then makes it easier for her to point to something which is a little bit gray and then say, that's a lie too. And so right. then people go, well, yeah, she is regularly lied about, isn't she? Look at that YouTuber, look at that YouTuber, look at that YouTuber who said lies about her. So when she says this YouTuber here is telling lies, 
then there'll be some people that may well believe that. And it makes it easier for her to persuade certain decision makers that may be in a position to close things down. And as we saw just recently, yes. that she attacked the Sidley twins by suggesting yes. that they, and they hadn't shared any disinformation whatsoever. They simply commented like many people did on precisely what the First Lady of Nigeria said. So where you get these channels that are deciding, oh, I'll, I'll say this happened when it clearly never did. And the thing, and it's quite entertaining because you can look at the evidence of it and go, that just doesn't stand up to scrutiny. It doesn't track. But if you say as such, certain individuals very much get their knickers in a twist about being oh. called out about uh, what, what they have uh, put out there. And they don't, they don't seem to appreciate that you're simply evaluating the veracity of the evidence. And they, they think it's a personal attack. And well, not to mention that if Meghan Markle were to suddenly look at some of these channels and some of the things that these people are saying, they're opening themselves up to a lawsuit. Absolutely. <laughs> because, yeah, they are. You know, this, this person's claiming this and this is what I heard and this is what she said. And I'm literally counting yeah. the lawsuits, the possible lawsuits from listening to this. Because if you think Meghan Markle is not on social media, you, your head is somewhere. Oh, yeah. She's because watching. she absolutely is watching. It's just like, um, again, she used the Netflix docu-series to try to debunk all the stuff she saw on social media. Like, I was dressing like Diana. Yep. Then, And everybody noticed it. And then she said, well, it was the palace that made her do it. But yet, since she's left the palace, she's continued to dress like Diana. Yep. So we know well, that's not true. She is, she is watching. It shows, as I just mentioned. How did she know to single out the Sidley twins? Exactly. She was, she was clearly watching. She's what, watching what they've been. And of course, they've come under, as I explained in my video, why did she specifically target them it was because they did the forensic takedown of Mies and Harriman's photograph using their father's expertise, who's an expert witness in court. Exactly. And he, like the crybaby he is, goes running to this one's wife saying, they've been nasty to me. So in order to control him as a lieutenant, she can then train her sights on them and so did so through the supposed fact checking so yeah uh, it is it is important there are instances of course as i mentioned earlier on i always explain to people you can make your own mind up about this evidence in some instances i'll express my skepticism about it what's also interesting is in order to stop myself from getting completely bored by the duchess of delusion and her industrial beigeness what I often do is, well, I occasionally will will write a spoof where I will create a scenario. And it's astonishing that there are still people who go, is this made, is this made up? Oh, this can't be right. And you're thinking you don't recognize satire. And mm -hmm. it just goes to show that with the channel, there does come a responsibility with regard to the use of the information, because there are still quite a number of gullible people out there. Yes, yes, there are. But I let me just say, I think I totally appreciate you may not remember this, but back in 2021, Boozy had my YouTube channel shut down. I yep. was offline for 10 days. Um, and then a journalist called YouTube to find out why it was down. And suddenly it boop, came back. Yep. But you were one of the YouTubers who put out a video in defense of me. And I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Uh <laughs> Notwithstanding the fact that I am a narcissistic psychopath, I still like evidence, you see, Sue. So, and I, and where I recognize poor treatments in relation to someone who's telling the truth, and it naturally suits my purposes to identify that, I will do. So you're most welcome. Yeah, well, you. Sue, thank you so much for spending some time with me today, kicking over a few topics there. Pleasure to hear your thoughts about them, and uh, we must do it again. Absolutely, and thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Thank you, Sue.